It's Flash 105.5 FM. And you know, this program is about chatting with your favorite celebrities. And guess who we have here? Yes, I have read his great profile. And we have here with us Lonnie Hunter. Hi, sir. Woo. How are you? <laughs> hey, beautiful. How are you? I'm doing great, sir. How about you? Good. I can't complain at all. I'm chilling with you. So I'm all good. Mm, okay. You know, I call you the OG before IG. Do you know what that means? The OG before IG. So before IG was out? Yeah. Like you've been the legend, like forever legend. Like okay. you've been, yeah, you've been in the entertainment for a very long time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I started when I was um, 15 as Minister of Music for Voices of St. Mark, which is who most people know me by with the um, Let's Dance and the Drip Drop song and all of that. I was Minister of Music there at 15. So a lot happened before people knew about Lonnie Hunter and the Voices of St. Mark or me. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That, that was really, really nice. You started your music career 1998, right? Correct. Okay. Somebody's been on Google. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, with the release of you know Lonnie Hunter and the voices of Saint Mark, and yeah. Your, yeah. So can you can you please do a comparison of how the gospel music was then, uh, was back then and now? Uh, because of the economy, it was easier to have larger uh, singing aggregations. So that's when you had um, the voices of St. Mark, you had uh, Hezekiah Walker in his large choir, Ricky in his large choir, because it was easier to travel people on buses. And um, so as as time go, went on, you know, it got kind of harder financially to move people. So a lot of times you would, um, so now you will hear a choir CD, but when that artist comes to the town, they're using singers from that town or uh, wow. a, you know, a smaller amount of people that are, is from their core, but then they fill the choir up with people from the area because it's just cheaper to do it like that. Mm. Wow, amazing. Um, can, can you say back then it was really easier than now or it's really easier a lot now with the entertainment industry? Like for artists? It, it is easier now to get started because there's so many independent options you have. Mm. it was easier then to have longevity because there were less people in the field. Mm. You follow me? So now, since everybody has an outlet, i.e. YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, you know, everybody can be famous, if you will, from those platforms, there's not that big of a, a rush to get to somebody's CD. Because if you, if you noticed it, we don't even sell CDs anymore. Yes. Very seldom, very seldom do you find an artist that will do a complete CD of 11 or 12 songs. Uh, the smart thing now is to do either an EP of maybe four or five songs or put a single. Hmm. Okay. Not only are you a great gospel artist, you are also a pastor. And, you know, you have your own TV show, the Learning Onto TV show. You featured amazing celebrities all over the world. And, you know, you are also um, a great big radio personality. And, you know, you reach out to over 15 cities all week. You know, yes. you've hosted several major events and award shows, as well as, you know, 33rd Annual Stellar Awards. Right. Um, yeah. You know. yeah. So it was great. Um, the Stellar Awards um, was a fluke because mm. what happened, the person that was supposed to do it, and this has been my life's journey, uh, the person that was supposed to do it, their flight didn't get in on time. Wow. And they called me and said, could you do it? I said, sure. But now the only thing I bought to wear with me because I was I was scheduled to do the pre-show anyway. So, okay. you know, you, you bring your clothes for that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, if I do this, one of these things ain't going to get done because I didn't bring no clothes. Cool. <laughs> yeah, and, that, and that's how that happened because I, was, I just happened to be ready, you know, for the opportunity. But uh, aside from that, that taught me to always Prepare. overpack because you never know what's going to happen.
I had mm-hmm. I had jeans and sweatpants. What you see on stage is never me through the week. <laughs> like, how, how did you feel that time? Do uh, like always? Um, were you still shocked? I was that? shocked. Mm-hmm. I was shocked through the whole thing, through the whole night. I was shocked. I kept just I kept telling myself, I can't believe this is happening. Wow. Because what was supposed to happen was at some point during the show, the actual host that they booked was supposed to arrive okay. and we were going to do a trade-off and let him do the rest of the show. So I really was just filling in for that part of the show, but he never came. Aww. And I wasn't mad. <laughs> Wow, that was a great opportunity. Yeah. yeah. It really turned into a lot of other things because I host a show called the McDonald's Inspiration Celebration Gospel Tour. Yes. And um, that's been, I've been the host for that for eight years now. Wow. Yeah, and that started as a fluke. I wasn't supposed to be that. Erica Campbell was the host. And um, one year, eight, eight years ago, uh, she got sick and they asked if I could fill in for just Philadelphia because I happened to live in that area at the time. That's where my show was out of. I mm-hmm. said, yeah, so I did it for free. Philadelphia turned in to Philadelphia and Charlotte, then Charlotte and DC. And the next thing I know, eight years later, I'm the only host. Isn't that crazy? What? It I is. Know, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was really, really nice. That is dope. Like, wow. That yeah. is a big opportunity. Yeah. Now, what happens if you were in there? You know? What you know? What always what always uh, rings in my mind, and I hope somebody can take away take something away from this. Mm-hmm. What would have happened if I would have found the need to charge them hmm. that first night? What would have happened if I would have said I can't do it unless you pay me this amount of money, and they went on to somebody else? Oh. That would have been just Philadelphia because they would have paid me to do Philadelphia, but they would have rethought the rest of the cities because of budget. And I would have cut off my blessing, my real blessing, Mm -hmm. by being all over grand for that one night. So Hmm. take your opportunities and make sure you make the most of them because you never know what they could turn into. Hmm. Wow. This is something because... In the entertainment scene right now, you know, we have different people who really want to dive into the entertainment scene, you know, TV host, radio host, and, you know, like maybe the red carpet, for example, and, you know, someone says, okay, there is a big show right here, but we don't have money. Can you host the shows? Uh, can you host this show? This show will give you a lot of opportunities that you might want to. What, what do you think? Should that person host it or should just request for his money? I think you have to be discerning about what you actually bring to the table. Mm -hmm. So if you bring to the table a name that will draw people, Mm -hmm. there's worth that goes with that. Okay. If you are trying to break in and this is an opportunity to be on stage with the other people that have really drawn the people, you end up putting yourself in a platform to where now other people can see me and I can grow my brand. So if I'm just starting out as a host, it's crazy for me to require something. Mm. It's, I always tell myself, don't be demanding when you're not in demand. Hmm. Oh, oh, nice. You, you got it. Yes. You cannot be demanding if you are not in demand. So you have to kind of structure that to where it works best for both parties. Hmm. That's really nice. That's really Perfect. I hope people listening right now would have, you know, picked some uh, one of the uh, one or two things from what you have said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, growing up, can you tell us some of the uh, some of the things that shaped you into the superstar you are now? Did you know, or at what point did you know you were going to do uh, music? You're going to do radio. You're going to do TV. How did you How do you come about that? I'm gonna tell you something that very few people know. My mother was a gospel singer and she did a lot of work with the caravans. Yeah, she was an amazing vocalist. Yes, and Albertina Walker is my godmother. Oh. Yeah, so when I was coming up, I was always made to go to church and I was made to sing because my mother made me sing. So when she passed, I was nine years old. And the way I got into this is because I wanted to keep her name alive. This had nothing to do 
with my relationship with God or, you know, how deep and spiritual I was, none of that, because that hadn't developed yet. Uh, I just wanted to keep her name alive. So I continued to sing. That's how I ended up ministering music at 15, because I was just depending, I was de I was determined to keep people knowing that my mother was Augusta Hunter. My, my mother is Augusta Hunter, just to keep her name alive. And as time went on, it just kind of morphed and built, you know, and God had it in his plan. He knew what he was doing, but yeah. I was just following from a personal standpoint because she meant so much to me and God took it and he transformed it into what it is now because I went to school uh, for public administration. That's what my degrees are in. Mm -hmm. uh, so for 10 years, I spent as the Dean of Students for Chicago Public Schools. Mm -hmm. The mean guy, you know, suspending people and, and putting people in detention and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I was doing that by day and by night, I would go on tour. So my students would see me online being a gospel person and I would get to school and I would be suspending them. They'd be like, this is not the same person that I see. Wow. <laughs> Being so nice on stage. <laughs> it was crazy. Mm -hmm. Wow. You really love your mother. My dad, uh, my dad died when I was 10 years old. And mm -hmm. I started, I grew up, I started, I, I started working at the radio station since when I was 15, 16 as well. And wow. Okay. So you know. Yes. So, um, you know, at what point did you know, or let me just ask you this question as a big radio personality and a TV show, uh, as well, um, you own, uh, you own an amazing TV show and as a big radio personality, how do you source for guests on your show? How do I search for guests? Yes. Two ways. Uh, one, I try to pay it forward. So if, if somebody has something that's coming out or something that, that they want to promote, I try to uh, make a space for them uh, just to make that platform available. The other thing is I try to uh, pick guests who are attached in some way to the topic because oh. my TV show and my radio show, I try to be topical. It's not just that was this artist and up next is this artist. I try to be informational and motivational and impactful. So I try to get guests who um, can kind of tap in on a deeper level than just what do you have coming up next? Hmm. Follow me. Okay. You have amazing songs, you know. Um, this, I've always thought you did this, these are the days of Elijah. Mm -hmm. Like you wrote the song. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, the funny thing about that song, though, is every time I wanted to do it, somebody mm -hmm. put it out before me. <laughs> oh, yeah, really? so I wanted to do it, and Donnie McClurkin put it out. So I oh. backed off. Then I wanted to do it again, and um, uh, what is his name? Uh, Fellowship <laughs> Chicago. Oh. Um, what is I can't think of his name now. Is it Robin? Something it, say it again. Is it Robin's? I can't really remember. Oh, no, it um oh shoot. But anyway, fellowship uh in Chicago, the church okay. fellowship, uh they put it out. Oh. Uh and then I waited a, a while again because it was my favorite song. So I finally got a chance to put it out and I called Vanessa Bell Armstrong and was like, I got a chance to do it. I should do it right now. And she said, I would love to sing on it. Now oh. who says no to Vanessa Bell Armstrong, right? <laughs> And you know, that's how that collaboration happened. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow! That's that's like God saying everything is working together for good for those that love God and called according to His purpose. Yes, yes. Yeah. So in the entertainment scene, you know, a lot of artists, lots of amazing celebrities like you must have had different difficulties, challenges along the way. Do you mind sharing us some? And have you had any? Do you mind sharing us some? Um. Challenges would be me getting over uh, myself. Okay, how? I used to be. I used to be the person that would get intimidated by somebody else's talent. So you know, a lot of times when people are in a show and somebody comes on before you and you 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 follow them, mm -hmm. 
the sex, the success of what they did before me used to get in my head and stop me from being all that God called me to be wow. when I came out. Yeah. And that's just to be transparent. I had to get over that and realize that what God gave them, he gave them for whoever is that, who, whoever's supposed to get that. What he mm. gave me, he gave me for whoever's supposed to get that so that it's all working as the body. Uh, so it's not like Yolanda Adams can come before me and I need to come out and try to be what she was because oh. I'm not that. You you follow me? I have to come out and hopefully artists are listening to me and, and can uh, attest to this. You have to come out and just be you because mm. as soon as you leave or veer away from what God has called you to do, you will fail. Yes, definitely. You know, we have so many people who are, you know, um, looking at what others do to work for themselves. They don't want to like um, follow their own path. They are following someone else's path, you know, and, you know, sometimes it could just make them fail in whatever they are doing, you know? Right. Yeah, that's why, I agree. That's why it's good. Yeah, that's why it's good to be unique sometimes in whatever you do. Like, don't follow the crowd, they say. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because so, if 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 people didn't do what they were called to do, we wouldn't have as much variety out here now. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Hmm. You're an amazing family man also, and you are 57. You look, oh my God, do you, you look um maybe 32 or something? <laughs> I'll take it. I will take it. <laughs> I think that I think that's genetics. You know, my father died when he was 98. Wow. Um, and he didn't even get gray hair until he was well into his 70s and it started turning salt and pepper. So whatever was in him, thank God that it's in me. <laughs> wow, you look amazing. Yeah. And you're doing workouts as well. You're working. I was like, oh my God, this is a grandpa working out. What's stopping me from working out? Get it done. Get it done. Get it done. Okay. You have an amazing family, I must say. Uh, you know, you show your grandchildren, your kids as well. And you adopt me as well because I'm your child. Yes, I'm your child. You're going to adopt me. Say that again. Adopt you? Yes. To be one okay. of your children. How old, are you? How old are you? I'm 24. Okay. So then you're my youngest girl. Yeah. Okay, done. <laughs> nice. So, um, so I have a 35-year-old, a 30-year-old, and a 19-year-old. So you're right in the middle. My son is the youngest. Oh, wow. I'm so glad. Um, so you, you, I, I like the way you flaunt your family, you know, your grandchildren, your children as well. What, what can you say about your family? Can you tell us a little bit about your family? Oh, I love them to death. Um, my kids are literally my life. So a lot of times when you see me in the gym, I really do not enjoy that like it seems. <laughs> I really do it because I am determined to stay alive and well and active for both my kids and, and their kids so that, you know, I am an asset to their lives as opposed to a liability about you know, who's going to take care of grandpa or who's going to take care of dad or where's dad going to, I don't want to be that dude. Wow. I want to make sure that I do everything I can physically, mentally, spiritually, going to the doctor, making sure I'm up on what's going on with my body so that when they do call me and trust me, they do to say, you know, dad, I need, or dad, can you help me with, I want to be in that space to where, yes, absolutely. Let's, let's get it done. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why you see me taking such good care of myself. Now, I am by no means mm -hmm. a fitness buff. I do not train. I am not do. I am not that dude that's gonna take off my shirt and have a six pack. It ain't happening. I saw your muscle. <laughs> like, I saw your muscle. You wear. I might have that, but I'm gonna eat. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, so I, I try to balance it so that uh, you know, because a lot of times on stage, when people send you clothes to wear. Mm. they are they're cut european so a lot of that stuff is small so mm. i can't go out there with a stomach hanging down to my knees <laughs> and it only fits in the shoulders you know what i'm saying <laughs> that's not a good look oh, wow. so yeah that's 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 the gist of that i'm the youngest of, of five kids 
all girls and I'm the I'm the youngest and the only boy. Yeah. So I try my best to take care of my sisters, you know, whatever they need or, you know, if their car goes in the shop or if they whatever they might need. They're all successful on their own. But I want to be able to spoil them like they spoiled me when I was coming up because there's 10 years difference between me and the sister next to me. Oh, yeah. Okay. Are you having any songs soon? Are you dropping any single? I am. I am. It's called Flow Like a River. Flow Like a it River. Should, uh huh. It should be out uh, in February, if I'm not mistaken, in, like the, toward the end of February, uh, with Lonnie Hunter and Structure. And it's called Flow Like a River. I'm so excited about it. So excited about it. So it's, it's a worship song that has kind of a groove to it. But it's something that every praise team can sing, no matter what level of singer you are, you will be able to pull this off. Mm, wow. I, I can't wait to listen and I can't wait to play it also and to share it as well. My daddy's song is coming February, Flow Like a River. Nice. So, my dad, right? <laughs> right, right. I love it. That's funny. Okay. So, um, you know, in this entertainment scene, um, they say some gospel artists are underpaid and, you know, some gospel artists are silent billionaires. What do you have to say about it? If you are a gospel artist and you are a silent millionaire or billionaire, you have other streams of income. Okay. Period. <laughs> you are just not out here making this money just from gospel because uh, gospel in and of itself does not have a huge budget uh, when you talk about just people putting on concerts and that kind of thing. But when you can connect to corporations like McDonald's or get a, a corporate sponsorship or that kind of thing, uh, or you do radio or you uh, minister music, you know, th that kind of stuff is these other streams of income. So you see people with clothing lines and all of that, you know, selling stuff that uh, is part of their brand. You have to uh, diversify if you're going to make it in mm. this industry yeah which is top three now right now we have amazing um young gospel singers who are really making it big who, who can you say is your top three as the legend um jonathan mcreynolds yeah uh todd delaney and it's hard for me to to name these people because they're friends of mine so when i'm listening to them I'm not listening like a fan would listen. So you, when you talk to them all the time, it's hard to do lists like that. Um, a real, f well, she's not gospel, but I'm a real fan of Brandy. Now, if you want me to fan out, Ooh, I, I will Brandy. fan out over some Brandy, right? Right. Now her, I don't know, but I, I love her. Oh, nice. Okay, if you were given a chance to change something in the entertainment industry, what would it be? Um, I would change, uh, and I want to say this and make sure I position it right. Mm. I would change the knowledge of when to stop. Mm. Not stop your career, stop a song. Mm. sometimes people get into a song and they will sing it for 15 minutes <laughs> and I'm like the, the spirit came the spirit did what it did we shouted we fell out now we're back and you still singing this same this same song it is incredibly necessary for people and you know people often say that you can't really you shouldn't stop the spirit or you shouldn't limit the spirit or you let's have church and all of that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. all of those are things that um, really alienate the people who you're trying to draw in. Yes, the people who love gospel music are still with you 10 minutes in, but the people who you're trying to reach and be life-changing for, they have tapped out. So I always tell people, don't pay attention to the first four or five roles because those are the same people that are on your side. So they're going to push you. They're going to say, let's go. Pay attention to the guy in the back. 
-hmm. that didn't want to come in the first place and they came because their girlfriend told them they wanted them to come so now they're in the building this is your opportunity to be life-changing for that person so you don't want that person to leave tired of you you want that person to leave saying i really enjoyed him and his message was so it's 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 really really kind of dangerous to overstay your welcome and let them be glad to see you go as opposed to <laughs> glad to see you start. <laughs> oh, have you been to Nigeria before? I have not. Oh, do you have plans coming to Nigeria? Yeah, when you call me and tell me to come to Nigeria, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, um, can you share five things people don't know about you? Five things. Five things people don't know about me or assumptions that, that they make about me. Um, number one, I don't like to shop. And people think because of the way they see me dress that I spend a lot of times in the mall. Yes, I forgot to, okay, keep saying it. I wanted to say, I forgot, like, I forgot to mention that you have an amazing fashion sense. Yeah, I know I know what looks good on me, but I don't like going to buy it. <laughs> so I'm that dude, I'm that dude that will walk in a store and if I don't find what I'm looking for in that store, I'm not walking through the mall. Oh wow. I hate I hate malls. So that's one thing. Uh number two is I am an avid roller skater. Forward, backward, whatever it is, I can do it all on roller skates. Mm. Um, number three, my favorite dish is macaroni and cheese. Oh. And I will eat it until I get sick. <laughs> it's, I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> okay. Uh, number four, um, I don't know if this is a, what people may think. I am not as as funny as I appear on my TV show or rate or you hear me on my radio show radio show. Oh really? Yeah, I, I am not I am not that dude that likes to go to gatherings. Mm. So if I if somebody invites me over their house, I probably won't come. So I'm I'm okay with, with people watching me do what I do. But when it comes to me being a, in a room of people that I don't know, mm -hmm. I am not as outgoing as one might think. Um, and what am I? Is this number five coming up? Mm -hmm. uh, this is a long list you ask somebody to come off the top of their head with. Usually it's like, give me three. <laughs> give me 18 things about you. <laughs> 35 things about you. Right, right, right. Uh, so the fifth thing would be um, I love to swim. You love to swim? But not but not in pools. I love to swim in the ocean. Ah. Uh, so stuff like I have a fear of birthday parties because I won't eat the cake. Why? You know when people bring the birthday cake out? and you mm -hmm. sing happy birthday, and the person blows out the cake, mm -hmm. uh, blows out the candles, all mm -hmm. I see is them spitting on the cake. And I won't eat the cake. <laughs> <laughs> they say, make a wish and blow out the candle. And they say, and they say, would you like a piece? No, I'm, I'm good. I bought my own cake. <laughs> oh, wow. I think you should also add comedy to your um, to what you do. You think so? <laughs> yeah, I'm like that with birthday cake. I'm like that with buffets. When you go to these restaurants that are buffets where people can get their own food, all I do is sit there and watch people have these conversations and they're laughing and joking over the food and they're throwing stuff around. I'm like, I don't want that. I don't tell them. Potlucks I won't do because I don't know if you have cats on your on your counter and dogs licking stuff and all that kind of stuff. No, and then you come to work with this pot that was dirty when you put it in there. No, I'm good. Wow. I just have this water and tell the Lord, thank you. 
<laughs> wow, it's really funny. And, you know, it's amazing uh, conversation we've had. It's such an amazing conversation I've had with you today on the Splash Chit Chats. Um, so what do you want to say to people out there who are your fans, you know, who are who have been your fans for a long time and, you know, who are listening to you? as well i love i love my fans i love everybody that listens to my show if you follow me on instagram or facebook or anything like that you know that i am one that will respond to you um so interaction is very key because if you don't have fans in this business you don't have a career mm -hmm. so i love hearing what people have to think what people have to say and in this business you have to have uh, thick skin it's like water off a duck's back when stuff doesn't apply because some people will just kind of say mean stuff and they don't mean it to be mean mm. they're just saying it from their perspective you hear it from your perspective in a different voice than what they typed it so it's just like when when uh somebody says something to you and you say anyway the fact that you can see me do that you don't take that negatively if i just type it and you say uh, you know i fell in love with so and so and they are they really mean a lot to me and i put in anyway you're going to read that with a different tone than what you saw me do when i said yeah. it so you have to make sure you're able to kind of decipher and kind of not have uh such a thin skin to where everything bothers you or you think everybody's just trying to be mean to you because a lot of people aren't hmm Okay. Um, thank you so much for speaking with us today on the Splash Chit Chat. It's amazing having you. Thank you for... My yeah. All My right. Pleasure. Okay.